All right, good afternoon, everybody. My name is John Semple. Let me go ahead and turn on my webcam so everybody can see I'm actually a real person, albeit a little fuzzed out by my webcam. But I'm going to be taking care of this webinar today. We are going to be taking a look at SOLIDWORKS Electrical Schematic and some of the import tools available within the software that will let us take legacy data and create reusable new library data within the schematic software itself. All right, like I just said, welcome everybody. This webinar is going over importing legacy ECAD data into SOLIDWORKS Electrical. We're going to go ahead and take a look at importing title blocks, manufacturers parts, symbols, and I've got a couple additional items at the end of the presentation to show further import and edit capability uh, within the software. So like I mentioned, my name is John. I'm an application engineer with an electrical specialty working for Go Engineer. Uh, I got brought on to the company once they acquired CATI and I've been here uh, about a year and a half since we got acquired. Absolutely loving being on the application engineering team. It gives me the ability to come out and actually outreach to the community and provide a little more information about the software. A couple quick things about me, I like to fly fish and camp, they kind of go hand in hand. I'm also a very proud father and also I'm a cat dad. So last but not least, I also enjoy wrench time because of the previous life quality. I'm a dad, I need a little bit of time to myself so I can actually think. I get that by working on my car. Located in Cleveland, Ohio, a quick statement on who we are. We are Go Engineer. We're the number one technical resource worldwide. We also have the largest dedicated SOLIDWORKS electrical team in the country. So largest technical resource. We've got a couple things to talk about to kind of kick off this presentation. Now, we're going over different import tools within the software, but we have to have a certain mentality before we attack the problem of creating this new data from legacy. All right, we've got a couple of different choices we can make. The software has a couple of tools that are relatively automated. We still have a couple of things that we have to link together, but all in all, that's what I'm going to refer to as the automated functions within the software. We also can choose to not necessarily import entire drawings, but rather focus on individual symbols. And there's a very easy manual process to go ahead and bring in individual entities. So we'll take a look at examples of both. But again, that's just something you want to think about moving, moving into the subject of importing old legacy data. We want to be methodical. We want to have a process in mind. And more than anything else, we need consistency between the data. The precursor to anything with an automated import export tool, good in, good out. And it goes the exact opposite as well. So with that said, we want to make sure that symbols coming in, they've all been set up the same way. Most people are going to be coming from a legacy software like AutoCAD Electrical. Make sure that you're using uh, consistent attributes for description and part number among all of your different engineers. That way, if a symbol is created by different individuals, it still is set up the same in the background and the software will be able to automatically import that. All right, so the two methods I mentioned, individually versus automated. Individually, we've got a little precursor step. We need to take every block and extract that to a DWG. Additionally, we also need to explode that block. It can't actually be a block entity. We need it broken down into the geometry and the block attributes that live in that file. The automated tools, however, they allow for a couple additional things to be done all at the same time. In addition to handling both symbols and title blocks, we can also handle attribute mapping, even setting the page type for import into our electrical project. All right, and we do not have to go and explode the blocks. We can just import a full DWG containing all the blocks exactly as it would coming out of AutoCAD Electrical. And we can go ahead and set a couple things up in the background to create a configuration file. Like anything automated in the electrical software, everything relies on a configuration, which is really just a group of settings that we then give a name. That way we can recall at a later point in time. So the whole point of this webinar is really to build the mentality about walking into importing legacy data and also 
highlight the importance of the process that you'll have to follow. All right, so our end goal is gonna be save out a configuration file. We do a little bit of work initially up front to build our settings. We run an import, verify that everything works, and then we've saved that configuration file. Next time we go to import, we don't have to limit it to one drawing. We can do an entire directory if we wanted to. So work smart, not hard mentality. One last thing I'd like to mention before moving on here, one of the most important aspects of preparing for import, create a new library. That way, when we bring data into the software, we assign it to that library. And then when we go and make our verifications and further edits down the line, we've got a very quick way to filter down to only items that I just imported. Once everything's been verified, go ahead and populate uh, the correct library field once that's been complete. All right, and that was my last slide there. So the first thing that we're gonna take a look at here, we're dipping our toes in nice and easy. It's gonna be importing a DWG as a data file or a file shortcut. Now, a couple things to note before we dive into the live demonstration for that. Now, a data file, what that does, it will attach a reference copy of a specified document to the electrical project document tree. All right, the reference file, once you archive your project, it's actually extracted out and included within that archive file. So not only does it copy it at the moment that you go ahead and attach, it also takes that copy and loads it into your file that you can send out to any other user. All right, so the one caveat is for a data file, you obviously have to have an application on your machine capable of opening that file that you're attempting to attach. So if you don't have Microsoft Excel installed, you won't be able to actually go ahead and attach an Excel file up until you've got some something that will actually read that. On the flip side, we have data shortcut. Data shortcut creates a true shortcut link within your electrical project. Difference here is that no file is copied. There's no file included with the archive. This is truly just a link. Also meaning that you have to have network access to that file in order for it to open. So if you emailed yourself a project on your home PC, you clicked on a data shortcut link that was linked to a file in your work network and you weren't connected by VPN, you would not be able to go ahead and view that file. So again, it's more of an in-work style shortcut, pulling up data sheets, that kind of thing. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just dive right in. I've got an electrical project that I've got set up, very basic stuff here. We're just gonna go ahead and start demonstrating a couple of these different principles. So to demonstrate the DWG as a data file, you can right click a document book, we go to new and we've got data file. All right, if I go to my data file, jump in here, I've got a sample schematic. What that does, the data file automatically copies the file in, adds it to my document tree, and now I've got access to it. SolidWorks Electrical is a 2D uh, capable editing program. So you can open up a DWG file here and we can go ahead, draw more lines, add more symbols. You can go ahead and edit this to your heart's content. Now the one downside here, there's no intelligence. We did not do any block recognition nothing like that. So this drawing is essentially a very neat looking napkin drawing from AutoCAD Electrical, uh, probably not electrical, just AutoCAD. All right, same exact thing for the data shortcut. So quick right click new, we can go ahead, select that same file. We get a different logo in our document tree, this time with a little arrow indicating, hey, this is a shortcut. It's not actually going out to a file. If I double click that to open, It'll actually open up whatever DWG software you have. In my case, I've got DraftSite installed. So I'll go ahead and let that open up. And cue the crickets, there we go. And we've got that opened up, albeit in the background. So let me jump over here. A 
live presenting. Something always goes wrong. Apologies there. So I already had it open, accidentally closed it out, but this is our file. You've got a live link in the electrical project. So we double click that. It's a DWG file. So once we double click, Windows takes over. Whatever the default application is to handle DWG files, it'll go ahead, open up there. Now I'm free to go ahead and make further edits at this point. So a little bit of a difference, but still two incredibly useful pieces of functionality. Uh, the ability to just attach existing files or create a shortcut link to quickly access that file. Personally, I like the shortcut link. It allows you to link to a actual network-based file that would be parametric. Uh, it's just a link. So if somebody makes a change, saves that file, and then you go and open it after the fact, you will open up the most up-to-date version of that file every single time. When we do the data file, this is more for static documents, things that you don't want to change. All right. So we covered data file and data shortcut. The next thing I'd like to take a quick look at, it's gonna be importing a single symbol. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and consider just a single component to enter. In this case, I've got a very simple, I believe that that's a motor, all right? So you'll notice in the screenshot here, we can see this particular block has been exploded and we see generic block attribute names. If you saw something like C12 in device number, go ahead and click on your um, entity there. I'm going to uh, just guess that it's still a block. Right click, explode it. You'll see these attributes actually show up. So I've already done that to this file ahead of time. We're going to go ahead and essentially take a look at bringing this in and then we're going to map the different electrical attributes coming out of AutoCAD over to the attributes within the schematic software. All right, so to do that, you'll notice most of our managers in our library tab, if I jump over to my symbol manager, for example, we do have the ability to import DWG files. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that, add my file, The link for that particular file shows up. We can go ahead and hit next. Now this is where we would go and choose a configuration. I've already got mine set up just to cut down a lot of time, but essentially we're gonna see the exact same steps. I would advise to start with one, test it out, see if anything by default gets read by the software and then make further edits to that. At the very end of our process here, we can go ahead and save this configuration out as a new name. That way we don't overwrite the existing one, but we also keep track of the changes that we just made. So I'll go ahead and choose my AutoCAD electrical import for now. All right, so we can see the software automatically picks up, hey, there's a symbol here. In this particular case, this symbol already exists in my library, so the software is gonna default to actually updating it for me. All right, so pretty neat functionality there. It does a quick library check. Whatever the name of that DWG file is, it does a quick check against our symbols within our library file, and then it shows you previews, new versus old. So every step along the way of doing this import, we can determine exactly what we're doing. So if I go ahead and click next, this is where a couple of things are happening. Like I mentioned, that initial screenshot, which I'll go ahead and drag back down here. This initial screenshot is my block and it's broken up. It's been exploded. So we've got these different attributes that are used to represent information when it's actually put back into block form. What the software is automatically doing on this side, it is recognizing the description one attribute from the AutoCAD electrical file. We're gonna go ahead and replace that by the SOLIDWORKS electrical equivalent, which is the COMTX0 attribute. So a lot of automated functionality happening in the background. Go ahead and click next. And this is where I can go ahead and say, you know what, I wanna save this configuration for use down the line. For this example, I'm gonna go ahead and just do not save for right now. All right, so you can see in my symbol manager, I've got my unclassed elements up and I've got my motor. The first thing I'd wanna do, I jump in here. I have a legacy import library right here. 
So I go ahead and I assign a library. Now, next time I'm looking for my items, I can just hit my library filter. It'll show me everything in a nice list. All right, if I click OK, I'm gonna go ahead and actually open this up in the background. So you'll notice now these values have all changed. This is truly a SolidWorks electrical block now. I can pull this up as a symbol, insert it into my drawing, and we can actually fill out the information for tag and all this other additional information. I'll go ahead and jump in here real briefly. Basic symbol import. I want to open up that motor in draft site just to show you the original. So again, we were device number, description one, two, FLA. Software automatically turn that into tag. The COM TXO, TX1 attributes, then the FLA, that's something that we actually chose to not edit. We chose to not replace that with anything. So for right now, I'm going to go ahead and remove that. If I hit the save button, exit out. Now I can go ahead back to my main drawing. I can actually insert that symbol. Go ahead and do that exact process. Quickly filter everything out. Down to my legacy import. I've got my motor right here. Put that on the page. And there we go. So we don't have any descriptions showing up right now, but we do have that component mark. Once we had a manufactured part, we get a little bit more information there. Okay, let me find my PowerPoint and get that set back up. All right, so we just covered importing a single symbol. We're going to take a closer look at manually doing some of those attribute mappings. I wanted to breeze through that just for time considerations. We're already a little bit into this demo. We still have quite a bit to cover. All right, so the next step in my process, I tested out importing a symbol just to get familiar with the functionality of the software. I'm getting more comfortable. Now I want to jump up and actually import a individual title block. Same exact principle applies in regards to the individual manual method for our symbol. We're going to go ahead, explode out a title block. I've already done that in the background. But you explode out the title block, save it as an individual DWG file, then we're going to show you how to bring that into the schematic software. All right, I'll jump right back here. This time, jump back into my title block manager. We also have an import DWG file functionality here. Same exact process. I jump in. I'm going to add my files. All right. So I've got a cover drawing added in. If I click Next, now we're being told, hey, you don't have this in your library. We're going to create a new title block for you. We're also going to go ahead and pre-select the AutoCAD electrical import. When I hit Next, this is when I have a couple things I can click on. I can see my name. That will be the name of the title block as created in my electrical database. That'll be the same as the name of the actual file itself. We also get a preview at the right, which you can zoom and pan in. So super useful to see what's actually set up in here. I can see that we've got quite a few attributes that we're going to need to go ahead and map over. All right, we can also add in description. If you double click here, properties pop up. So I can preemptively go ahead and put this in my legacy library and I can do a test webinar description. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, that information automatically pops up. Go ahead and hit my next key. This is again where we're converting the different attributes. So we've got AutoCAD electrical attributes on the left-hand side, CAD number, that's going over to Folio tag, checked by, rev verified by. So software is automatically picking these up and replacing it with the SolidWorks electrical equivalent attribute. All right, so let's just say this DWG number, that doesn't get automatically picked up for some reason. No problem. We can go ahead, hit our three-dot ellipsis. Now I have a ton of different attributes we can choose from electrical project, book, folder, drawing. 
we're looking for a drawing number. So we're going to go ahead. And because I know the setup of this particular project, we're going to go ahead and actually do our order number of our drawing. So drawing number is now replaced by folio number. Go ahead and hit next. And again, this the whole point of doing this is to save out that configuration file. So for this one, we're going to go ahead, hit save. All right, so that's updated my configuration file with all the changes I just made. Now, next time DWG number shows up as an attribute in a uh, import DWG file, it'll automatically go and convert that over to the folio tag on the electrical side. All right, so nothing opened up in the background. We just did that import. It should be in our library now. Title block manager, go ahead and filter that back down. There we go. I've got my single TB import cover. Even brought in my picture. All right. Go ahead and close that out. So our next step. We've only looked at doing individual entities in a relatively manual fashion. Now, we're going to use the same import DWG files command that we've seen in a couple of our different library managers. We're actually going to go ahead and use the same tool to go ahead and bring in multiple drawings at the same time, each with their own title block, multiple different symbols, even wires. So. We have a couple of additional things we can do when we're dealing with an entire drawing instead of just a specific symbol or title block singular entity. All right, so in the import DWG files command, it is a wizard that allows the import from multiple DWGs all at once. It will allow us to set our drawing type. We'll also have the ability to import blocks into our library. So it will open a DWG recognize that there are blocks contained within, and then we can choose to create new items in our symbol and title block libraries and have the software automatically push that information. So another big one, we can also take wires and actually convert them. So the wire conversion tool is a little two-sided. The wire information that can come across from a legacy import, it's a little limited. Typically what happens, uh, we get a new wire style created per layer name of the actual wires being used in that project. We also have an underscore version that gets added. Uh, the version turns out to be a three digit code. Uh, typically I've been seeing 256 for 2023. So when you do an actual import and bring in wires, we get a little bit of information that we need to do some data cleanup on. But I've got an additional tool in my pocket. We're gonna take a look at that at the very end of our presentation. For right now, we're going to go ahead and dive in and actually take a look at importing multiple DWG files here. All right, so jumping back in, I can go to my import export toolbar, import DWG files. We can choose a directory to import from. I've got a symbol import. I'm going to go ahead and select that folder. Next option is to select a configuration file. I'm going to go ahead and let mine ride. I've got an AutoCAD electrical import. I'm going to go ahead and click next. What the software does, it dives into that particular directory and it pulls out every individual DWG file and it builds up a new project structure. You'll notice if I jump back, we're navigating out to a directory this next screen, it shows all of my DWG names in order, but as pages within a new electrical project. All right, so if I click on that document book, it shows me previews of each one in turn. Now I can tell right away the symbol denoting this particular page, that's a schematic page. If I wanna go ahead and utilize a mixed scheme setup, I can actually go ahead and choose that for every individual file. I click the button after highlighting my objects. Now my icon has changed. These will get created as a mixed scheme page in the new project. 
All right, so we additionally have renumber files automatically. That'll tend to help out sorting through page numbers. Those can get a little messed up if you're only importing particular drawings out of a package. So go ahead and renumber those files automatically, make things easy on yourself. Additionally, I'm gonna choose to convert all the lines. Like I mentioned, this will create wire styles of the layer names used to represent those lines. And then we'll go ahead and look at the cleanup in a little bit. All right, so with those selected, I can go ahead, click next. Now this dialog right here, what this is doing, this is going into my actual file and it is recognizing, hey, this object titled ACAD E title, this is a block. It shows me a preview over here on the right. This is actually another title block. If I zoom in here, I can see it's just a very basic title block. If I go one line down, now we're getting into the actual symbols contained within my legacy project. I'll actually go ahead and pop that open real quick. All right, so DWG, you can see my title block, it is a block entity. If I jump in this symbol, also a block entity. It's got full on attributes. And a lot of you will notice that I'm also using draft site. So any 2D application that creates a DWG file, you'll be able to import that in. Most of those 2D applications treat blocks relatively the same. So the process should be very similar uh, if you're using AutoCAD or some other software. But you can see all of these items, they're not exploded. We did not have to do any cleanup. This is a drawing directly out of my legacy directory. We're gonna go ahead and pump this in to SolidWorks Electrical. What we can do here is I'm gonna choose to import every single one of my blocks and create a new block of equivalent kind. So up here at the very top, I'm gonna to call this a title block. Well, I apologize. So. Let me back up one second here. We have two options at this stage. I can either say, we don't have any of these in my library, so I'm gonna create and import every single one of these, and I can select my import selected blocks in library. Or if I know that, for example, I already have a title block that I want to use, I can actually go up here and say, you know what, I wanna replace this with a library item that I already have. It brings up my title block selector, I can select one and it will say replaced by. All right, I didn't necessarily want to do that. So I'm gonna jump back into the command. Symbol import again. Got all those. All right, so now we're back at this point. So I could say every time that this FP957 block is used in my AutoCAD drawing, I can go ahead and replace it with a block from my actual library. Same thing as the title block that we just took a look at. All right, so for right now, I wanna add all these into my system. I'm gonna highlight every single one, select import selected blocks in library, and I'm prompted to save out a zipped file. The software actually will go into that DWG file, extract out all my blocks, and do the individual DWG save by itself. Saves me a bunch of time. So I'll go ahead and give it a quick name, save that out. And made a little mistake, I should have deselected my title block. I'm gonna go ahead and import everything as symbols right now, and I'll clean up my title block in a little bit here. Go ahead and do that as symbols for right now. And actually, let me see here. I can cancel, there we go. So I'll import these selected blocks. We're gonna do test two, since I beefed the first one, and I'll go ahead and select as symbols. All right, again, we see that file path. Now we're back at the symbol import dialog that we saw a little earlier. When I click next, 19 new symbols will be created in the electrical software. Again, referring back to my default AutoCAD electrical import, And now it's actually gonna show us the individual elements as they will be created in our software. So import new symbols. We can see we get a nice list. Everything is named per the file name that it's in. 
And then we additionally can set library, class, a whole bunch of additional things. I'll go ahead and pump this into my legacy library. All right, so the next screen, again, we're back to attribute mapping. And this might look a little inundating, but we have to realize these are all of the different unique attributes that are contained within those 19 symbols as an entire group. We are setting this configuration file up, not just to use this one time, we wanna use this on every legacy project that you have. And odds are, if the first prerequisite that I mentioned in terms of consistency between attributes, if that's been met, we can go ahead and apply this to 100 drawings all at the same time. It will pull out all of the different attributes, and then it will make that association to the correct SOLIDWORKS electrical attribute all automatically uh, once we've actually gone and selected which one is which. So again, you can see that we've got a bunch filled out ahead of time by the software. If we knew, for example, this ESR, that's going to be important. I always want my ESR shown or at least accessible within my component properties. I can jump in and actually assign this to a component data field. Or let me see here. We've got manufacturer part data and manufacturer user data. So we've got a lot of different options here in terms of what we can attach things to. I'll go ahead and select this for now. And we can see that that automatically updates. So again, if this ESR value is found in just one symbol, it'll make that replacement there. If it's found in all 19, it'll go ahead and make that replacement in all 19 of my brand new imported symbols within my library. All right. So this time around, let's just say I've made a couple edits to my configuration, and it's a little more specific to the symbols that we're bringing in. I'm going to go ahead and call this webinar symbol import. I'll have a new configuration to use the next time I bring symbols in and I won't have to do any custom mapping because I've already done it. All right, so that did something very big in the background. It's not that impressive because we don't get bells, whistles, anything like that, but I think we should because in reality, we just added in 19 different symbols at the exact same time that we added those to our library. This particular import file dialog also updated its replaced by column. Initially, these were all blank. Now the replaced by is filled out with the actual SOLIDWORKS electrical block, and we can see the difference right here. Top screen, we're looking at the FP957, direct out of AutoCAD, all of the specific AutoCAD attributes. On the next window down, this is the uh, this is what we just did with that automated tool. It produced for us a symbol, automatically switched over those attributes, and now we're looking at it live in our library. And also, the software's by default said, anytime this is used, I want to use my electrical co uh, component there. All right, so I've got one last thing to do. That's gonna be the title block. This time around, I'm gonna hit imported selected blocks. We're gonna to have to save another quick test zip. These can be immediately deleted. Once you're done, you can jump back in and delete these, save a little bit of room. All right, this time around, we're doing a title block, so I will choose title block. And then from here, it is the exact same step. We're gonna see one new title block being added, get a quick preview of what that looks like. I can hit next. And again, all of my different attribute mapping taking place. So if this isn't set up and you're just bringing in a AutoCAD drawing, it's got CAD number, we jump in, hit those three dots, go underneath the drawing. This is where we can choose our file mark, which is the folio tag attribute, all right? So very easy to set this mapping up. It just takes a little bit of thought. All right, this one, I'm gonna not save the import here because we typically should only do a title block every once in a while. I don't need a configuration file for that. It's more time and effort to manage those configuration files and remember what the heck I did than it is to just go ahead and create a new one. All right, so again, automatically recognizes, hey, you just created a new title block in your library, so we're going to go ahead and pump that into this import. 
So right now, everything is being replaced with new entities that I just on the fly created in my library. I'm going to hit that next button. And again, now we're at the drawing level attributes. So all of the different attributes within the actual title block itself, now we have access to go ahead and map those accordingly. Now I've already gone ahead and set this up again, just for time considerations, but it's the exact same process. Hit the three dots, choose the item you want, hit replace. It shows up as the corresponding to value. If I go ahead and hit my next key, this is again, more symbol attribute mapping. We've already taken care of this. I'm gonna hit next. Additionally have terminal attribute mappings that we could take care of if we want. We have a little bit of control over merging lines. Lots of different lines will be offset very odd after an import like this. So controlling the offset parameter here lets you merge those lines automatically on import. All right, I'll go ahead and click finish. Software is working in the background and you can see that only took a minute or two. If I double click my drawing file, we've got electrical symbols, all right? Albeit we have a little bit of layer work and cleanup work to do in regards to how these symbols look right now. Uh, the fact is, this is how they came out of AutoCAD. So it is a one-to-one -one transfer. If I double click on these, those are electrical symbols. So we've got a bunch of additional lines floating around here too. All right, if I jump in, right click, take a look at my properties, we can see we actually have a link 256 wire style that's been created. So right now we can see electrical has already placed connection points for me on this particular symbol. You'd want to go ahead, do your due diligence, check your circuits, check the circuit type, make sure that it is exactly what you'd be expecting to see. All right, so again, just doing a little additional cleanup on the back end. One little pro tip I will give everybody here. When you are modifying any symbols and bringing in data into electrical, jump over to the modify toolbar, hit the purge command. This is the exact same command as in DraftSite, AutoCAD, other softwares. This will allow us to delete a ton of unused data within this particular symbol. And I can guarantee you, because I came from technical support, you will have less issues moving forward with that legacy data. If you do not purge, you're much more likely to have random issues due to things like errant text styles. All right, I do want to just kind of highlight one very simple thing here, draft site. A lot of people ask us, is SolidWorks Electrical a proper 2D drafting software? The answer is no, it is not. It is a schematic based software that has 2D drawing capabilities. Anybody that's opened it up, they understand the drawing tools that you have available to you. They're rather limited. The interface is rather simplistic. It is not meant to create new DWG files from scratch. You can, but not necessarily the intention. So one of the things I want to highlight here is the fact that DraftSite has a direct link capability to the SolidWorks electrical software. Uh, it does not cost anything. There's no installation. The only cost is making sure that you own both pieces of software. If you own SolidWorks Electrical Schematic and you have DraftSite installed on the same machine, jump into your add-ins. You'll see that you have a new toolbar. So if we pay attention to the very top of my screen, you can see things like Electrical Project Manager. Look at this. I'm in my Project Manager, but I'm in DraftSite. A little more impressive and a little more to the point of my webinar here today, Symbol Management. I have live window, a live window into my database for symbols, manufactured parts, title blocks, the whole nine yards. If I jump down, let me filter out to my legacy import library. So right off the bat, we can see every single symbol that I just imported into my software. If I double click one to open it up, this will open up in the background of draft site. 
I can go in and make all of my modifications to text placement, attribute placement, any other geometry, layer control, any drafting need I can take care of completely within the draft site software. And then all I have to do, I hit my save button. I close out, my database is automatically updated. So this is incredibly useful for teams that have split responsibilities, um, or you just want to give, let's say, a mechanical designer, if you want to give them access to help out your electrical team in this data creation, you could have them go ahead and utilize DraftSite, jump into electrical symbols, and then clean them up for your electrical engineers. They may be a little more familiar with the drafting side. So opens up a lot of windows. Again, this just requires that you own DraftSite and SolidWorks Electrical, and then you can activate the add-in and get pumping away, editing symbols that you just brought in through the legacy import tools in the schematic side. All right, so I'm racing against the clock here. We're gonna bite into a couple minutes of questions, but the next thing I wanna show you guys is important and it plays to a very good point. So let me jump back over to my electrical project. Now I mentioned when we bring in a imported file and we choose to convert the wires, it automatically creates a bunch of wire styles for us. Now, if I jump down here, I can see which ones they are right away. They all have this underscore 256 control. All right, so that's actually a embedded version, something to do with the translation that I haven't been able to get eyes on the source code for, but this is the automated functionality. Now, if I go in and take a quick look at this wire style, there's no information filled out. I just get the actual layer name, and that's about it. I can set up my formula. I can go in and enter my diameter and gauge, but that information is not actually coming along. So my best practice here, I actually will set up my own wire styles knowing what I'm bringing into the software. I go through my legacy project, I make a list, and then from there, we're gonna talk about that list. In order to make use of one of my favorite tools, we actually need to create some placeholder data. So one of my best practices, don't ever overwrite existing data if you can help it. And then also create and edit a placeholder either by creating a new entity or copying a reference and then modifying that. The point is placeholders are incredibly helpful. In this case, I went ahead and I created a group three. I knew that I was gonna be bringing in legacy data into my project. So I went ahead and I created 10 individual styles and they're all blank. I just right click, new style, and that's it. So I did that 10 times. And the point here is I have an additional export tool that's going to actually allow me to export my wire styles and then edit this group of placeholders that I have right here. The only caveat is you cannot add information. You can only modify existing data. So if you try and add another line, it doesn't work, unfortunately. I know because I've tried. So to show that off very quickly, import, export, export to Excel. I can add in my wire cabling list. And let's see, we are going to put that right there destination doesn't exist, that's fine. I'll go ahead and select one. Put that right at the root of my webinar. Okay, so let me check this out. Bear with me just a second, I apologize. Excel's fighting me a little bit. Let me go ahead and open up the file that I just exported. All right. So if I jump down here, this is the Excel file that gets created by Electrical. It exports all of my different styles, all of my different categories of information as well. So I can see my wire numbering formula, my equal potential formula. If I scroll over to the right, it even gives me the ability to edit the color code information, enter in a diameter, things of that nature. So if I go back down, I'm looking for these particular items. These are the placeholder items that I created. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight those just for ease of access there. And let me go ahead and put this up on the right side of my screen and let me open up an additional.
All right. I was supposed to have some things to copy and paste there, but I'm going to go ahead and enter that manually. No worries. So the point here, we've exported an Excel list of all of our different wire styles. I can go ahead and make edits to my heart's content. If I want to call this webinar wire style one, let's go ahead, slam that down to the rest. So one through 10, I'll go ahead just going to give these all a quick description of 12 volt. You know what? I actually like this numbering formula a little bit better. We're doing wire number plus section plus color. I like that. We're going to apply that to every single one of my new placeholder styles. All right. I can furthermore jump in. I can go ahead and set up a diameter if I'd like. Let's go ahead and do, do four. And I could continue on entering more information as I want to. So let me just see here. We save this out to the root. I'm going to go ahead and save this Excel file with my edits. And now I'm going to go import from Excel. I can go and add a file, my wire cabling that I just made an edit to. I'll go ahead and open that up. Now this dialog, let me maximize that. So what this dialog does, it goes and parses my file and it says, hey, in these 10 rows, we've got any information in green. We've recognized that that has been changed compared to what was in the project currently. So we're gonna go ahead and update that information. So you can see diameter, name, formula and description all got updated. If I hit next, we get an error report. And that's all she wrote. We can jump back in electrical project configuration wire style. And now my legacy data import, I've got updated names. I've got updated description, updated gauge, all of that good stuff. And there's my wire formula. So that's one very quick way to go and make edits. Uh, most of the time, people only use this when you're in getting off the ground, initially starting with the software, but it is still an incredibly useful tool to go in and quickly edit. Let's say if you have a standard wire numbering formula that you'd like to employ everywhere, you can go ahead and make that change in 15 seconds instead of it taking who knows how long to click through each one individually. All right, I have got one last thing that I wanted to share with everybody. And let me get my file. So we've talked about how to import symbols, title blocks, entire DWG files containing both of those entities that I just mentioned, converting the wires, mapping attributes, and then going in and creating new wire styles. Uh, I will backtrack just one moment because I realized that I left a little bit of a blank space here. So we created those different wire styles. We need to use them. So the last piece of that puzzle, I jump into one of my imported drawings. I can select one of the imported wires. We can see right now it's layer FAN, FHAN256. I can go to wire style, replace. I can choose whole project. Hit my check mark. I jump down, select one of the styles that I just created. I hit OK it will go through my entire project, meaning my other pages as well. Let me just see, it doesn't look like that style was on that page, but it was on this one. So I made the change on page seven. It went through every individual drawing, made that style change in every one of those places. If I do the same thing here, wire style replace, do whole project, Oop, don't hit that ellipsis, hit whole project and the check mark. This time I'll go ahead and choose number nine. Makes that change project wide. So now we're one step closer. We really just need to get uh, C points added to our symbols. 
manufactured parts added to those components. And this is where the last piece of my webinar comes and steps into the limelight. It is importing manufactured parts. So anybody coming to the software new, if you've jumped into the library, it's very limited out of the box. We have the electrical content portal. However, that's also not full. Uh, there's a ton of different items there, but very often you'll find there's some pretty basic components that you'll be looking for that you just will not find in that database. So that leaves us in a position where you might have an Excel chart from a past legacy project complete with reference number information. You've got your manufacturers called out. Heck, we've even gone ahead and recorded our supplier and some height and width information. So this could be, again, an old external legacy bill of materials, so to speak. But I can go ahead and use this to actually create library items in SolidWorks Electrical. If I jump back to my software, to my library toolbar, Manufacturer Part Manager. Here, we have a unique import command. If I go to import, I can go ahead and select my Excel file. Uh, and it does not like that file being opened. So let's go ahead and try that again. There we go. All right, so let me expand this window out. We select my file. I get a preview of that file's contents over here at the right-hand side. Again, we also have different import configurations. Here, it's going to matter a little bit less than doing symbols. So I'll just go ahead and select Electrical Designer, and we'll see what that actually gives us. I select my data type. This is going to be manufactured part information. Now, we just simply have to define a title row. I go ahead say row number one that contains my titles click next now we're at the fun part this is the manual attribute mapping so i'm going to go through and actually take my solidworks electrical attribute from the left we're going to go ahead and drag and drop that onto our excel column at the right hand side it'll form an association that way it'll read that column's data for that attribute when we create that library item We'll go ahead, drag reference to reference, manufacturers, pretty self-explanatory. We've got a description, we'll put that in English, and then we're just going to go down the line. I've got a stock number, I've got a supplier name. What else do we need? We need an actual reference. Aha, so I made a mistake. This isn't my reference column. I want that. Let me see if I can uncheck that. Oh, looks like I'll have to exit the tool. That's interesting. Again, live presenting. Something always happens that you haven't seen before. All right, so these are easy steps. Jump back in here. Do a one title block row. And I apologize, my reference, that's going to be my manufactured part number. Manufacturer, we got that right. There's description. Aha, 3D part. I do have some 3D parts. You can even link in file paths to an existing 3D part to add. That way, anytime you insert this as a manufactured part, it'll by default pull this model when you go to insert that in 3D. So I'll go ahead and do that as well. And I think everybody here gets the point. So drag and drop, it gets the information mapped over. I'll go ahead and click Next. run a quick comparison, and now I'm importing those into my database. All right, this time around, I didn't add a library right off the bat, so I need to go by creation date. Let's actually do this. I'm gonna go ahead, remove all of my filters. All right, and here we go. We can see this list right here, these first 20 items or so. Oh, I'm not sure why I did that.
There we go. These first 20 items or so, those are the manufactured parts that we just entered into the system. If I jump into my properties, every column that we did mapping to, you can see the reference, the manufacturer, that information is automatically added. If I jump down here, oh, I didn't get lucky. I thought I'd get one that I attached to 3D part two, but that information for the first five, that would go ahead and show up here as well. So very useful tool. The one downside that I'll point out to everybody, if you jump over to a created item, circuits and terminals tab will be empty. So you cannot bring along the electrical intelligence to actually make your connections. So to that point, I'm gonna end it with one of the best things you can figure out that is possible within this software is a right click, copy circuits from a reference item. It took me a little while to find that this command existed, but I can find an example that's already set up with the circuits that I need. I can copy them and then I can right click, I can paste those circuits. So now when I jump back in, go ahead and highlight that again. Now, if I jump over to my circuit terminal tab, I actually have some intelligence. So nifty little trick, put that one in your back pocket. That will save you all a lot of time, regardless of whether you are importing legacy data or not. All right, let me just double check. Yeah, that's all I had for today, everybody. So I've got a couple of slides that I'll toss up on my screen at the very end here. Oh, come on now. All right, so just a couple things to mention. Go Engineer, we do a lot of training. We do classroom training, self-paced. We have uh, certifications. We also have a comprehensive database of online resources. If you have not Googled us, uh, by entering in Go Engineer and then some kind of problem with SolidWorks Electrical that you're having or a question or something else, I highly advise you to give that a quick 